space is Sims, and we are back with the Moa Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore, and we are going to start doing... Well, look, we're already here. I was like, let me just start skipping through. We're here. Okay, we're going to start doing Chevalier's good ending. So here we are. We wake him. All right. I gently set a hand on his shoulder. Chevalier? Chevalier mumbles something in his sleep as I shake him. I pull my hand away as he blinks his eyes open. Mm, princess? That's not his worst. Anyway, is it morning? No, it's just past midnight, which is why you want to be in bed. Chevalier glances around slowly. After a few moments, he smiles sheepishly. Ah, I've done it again, haven't I? Yes, you have. I know I should get him to bed now, but... I remember the nightmare. It was more vivid than usual. And though it's possible it's just a normal nightmare, I have my doubts. Did you have another nightmare, Spacey? Shmali is always able to read me so easily. It was a small thing. He reaches out to press a, press a palm to my cheek and smiles softly. Oh, would you like to talk about it? Can we... Oh, we can talk tomorrow. Or we can talk right now. You know I'm always willing to listen. I frowned at him, but he just continues smiling his sleepy smile at me. I sigh. Fine, I'll tell you, but first, sit. I point to the bed. Chevalier is more than happy to oblige. He seats himself beside me on the bed. I recount the dream to him. When I'm done, Chevalier no longer looks tired. I wonder if this is a nightmare fueled by the Tenebrarum. Could it be? As the Tenebrarum bearer, I'm prone to nightmares, they be but they've been noticeably worse since Cinna came to Angeal. Cinna is Parfait's only cousin and the last remaining heir to the Lucius. None of us had heard of him until he spontaneously showed up at the tavern's front door one day. Apparently, Parfait was keeping his identity secret because she didn't want to place the burden of bearer on him, especially not at so young an age. But Cinna appeared regardless. Ever since he started living at the Marchen, I've been having strange nightmares. Well, what could the nightmares have to do with him? What could the nightmares have to do with him? <laughs> Chevalier leans forward and wraps an arm around my waist, pulling me from my thoughts. He plants a tender kiss on my forehead. Well, whether or not the Tenebrarum fueled it, a nightmare is still just a nightmare. I think in her own way, your mother wanted the best for you. I think she'd be proud of you. This is only the good end, but it's like, you're so sweet. Like, I had a nightmare. No, we can talk tomorrow. Let's talk now. I think your mom still wanted the best for you, even if she was an evil bitch. You're just too good. You're too good for this world. <laughs> oh, we'll see Sinna at the Marchand tomorrow, so perhaps you should bring up your concerns then. You didn't start having nightmares this lucid until he showed up, after all. Chevalier continues to console me. He's always been good at it. Soon, I'm relaxed enough to doze on his shoulder. The circumstances never mattered. I always feel so safe with him. Those are my last thoughts before I fall asleep in his arms. And we fall asleep in his arms and that's adorable and I love it. Oh, sorry, hold on. Skip. Wow. I notice despite his best efforts to smile honestly that his eyes are foggy. I can tell by the twitch in his lips that he's not well rested because we woke him up. This is my fault for waking him last night. Were you able to sleep, Chev? And not even a good morning in response. Answer the question. He shakes his head. And don't worry, princess. I'm glad you woke me up. I would have been devastated knowing you were suffering from a nightmare when I could have consoled you. But you look like you haven't slept at all. How long were you up? Hmm. I think I managed one extra hour of sleep. I groan as I fall back against my pillows. And don't look so gloomy, Spacey. The sun is shining, the clouds have parted, and there's absolutely no rain in the forecast. Today promises to be a good day. It won't be ruined by something as trivial as insomnia. As always, Chef is ever the optimist, but he really does need to rest. I stand with a sigh. Fine, then. Shall we get breakfast? Skip, skip, skip to Malou, having fun, skipping breakfast. Now we going out. Oh, now here we go. Confront them, bitch! 
this is right. This is where the bitches are being rude to my man. Oh my god, he's like so old. Bitch. He's just experienced in life. There you go. I slide away from Chevalier and make my way toward the women. I hope we really give them a fucking tongue lashing. Sneezy. Chevalier is far more tolerant than I will ever be. The women cease their chatter as I approach, swiveling around to curtsy. Damn well better curtsy, bitches! Good morning, your highness. The second woman echoes the greeting. Tell me, is it still a good morning when you hear someone insulting you behind your back? They exchange a mortified glance. L we humbly apologize, your highness. If you meant your apology, you wouldn't have spoken so brazenly in the first place. They continue to sputter the same apology. I wave them away, irritated. Honestly? Not what I expected, girl. I want you to go up and be like, excuse me, but not only are you insulting me and you can insult me all you want. That's fine. Whatever. Don't talk about him that way. He's goddamn magnificent and he's too good for this world. You shut your traps. You should be so lucky to have a man half as good as this. He's such a pure soul. <laughs> Just... I'll do whatever you need. Could you sleep? No, no, but I needed to be... No, oh my god. Stop it, you poor thing. Why are you so good to me? I still want karma. You know, because you need a little bit of a bitch on the side. You know? Like, Chevalier is so perfect and sweet. And you're just, like, so wholesome and wonderful. And, like, whatever. And then you have fucking karma. You're like, you're a little bit of a bitch. And I like it. <laughs> I don't want to hear you speak such demeaning words about my companion again. Understood? She's so formal about it. I'd be like, do I need to choke a bitch? I'm just kidding. I would never. I'm so fucking all talk. Like, I'm all talk. Like, yeah, someone tries to... But be like, what? No, no, uh-uh. Me, when that drunk guy was trying to get into my fucking house because he thought it was his apartment. Like, Excuse me, sir, could you please leave? You don't live here. So intimidating. I'm so fucking intimidating. And then like, back up, bitch. No, I was like, please leave, sir. You do not live here. Please to be leaving now. <laughs> That's the Canadian. There's a little Canadian to me and that was coming out then. Like, look, it's genetic. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. It clearly, your highness. Yeah, clearly you don't want to hear us. Yeah, maybe next time watch what you're like saying when I'm standing right fucking here. You aren't that blind. Both women curtsy before rushing off. <sighs> Not the backhanding that they should have gotten, but... Sneezy! Chevalier steps in front of me. I got, like, I'm almost like, because we went over and like, whoa, don't be rude about him. I just wish she had said something a little bit more, like, more, more muchier. I don't know. A little bit like, how dare you? Like, he's a wonderful, and like, this way he would have been like, oh, well, you know, just so he knows how much we love him. Like that, we'd beat a bitch for him. I'm just saying. <laughs> Are you okay? Why wouldn't I be? You don't need to fight my battles for me. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So I see why this is also, like, the good thing. is like, we're fighting his battles for him, and... Oh, no, we need to let him do it, but... I appreciate your concern, but you shouldn't have to go out of your way for me. He's gone out of his way for me many times. Is it so wrong for me to do the same? I doubt Father would stand idle if he heard someone criticizing Ophelia in front of him. Some people need to be reprimanded. And I mean, that's a good point. Like, you don't need to fight my battles for me. But standing up for you, in this case, is fighting a battle for me and for you. Because they're insulting you and, like, kind of insulting me in the process. And, like, I ain't standing for that shit. This is not, like, I'm going to bust in and be like, you need to be to the nobles. You need to be nice to him. No, you know what? You get them to treat you with respect. Because me telling them to respect you is going to make them respect you less. You know, but this, whoa, would you badmouth him? He's amazing. Not really fighting your battles for you. It's kind of coming to your defense in a way. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I'm wingmaning you here. Like, see it both ways, really. But anyway. I can tell that we're at an impasse. Nothing I say will convince him. Let's forget it for, about it for now, Chef. We ought to head to the Marchand now. We can always return later. I noticed this that his gaze is far away. 
almost melancholy. Poor thing. Well, I'm just standing up for you because I love you. You shouldn't always have to fight every battle alone. I hope he's not doubting himself. But the expression slides off his face as quickly as it appears. So suddenly, I wonder if it was there in the first place. Boop at the Martian. T Cinna. I shake my head. You call Chevalier an old man, Cinna, but you're the one who acts like most like a grumpy old man. Legit. Cinna bristles at the comment. It's hard not to be grumpy when you have to talk to such silly people. Silly? Ah, oh, tiny lord. I only mean to lighten the mood. Stop calling me that before I... Manners, Cinnamon. Skipping more. Do do do. Gonna get maybe... To oh, look, we're already... Oh, we're already in chapter two. Okay. <gasps> Mr. Broom! I do not have time for this. I step to the side in an attempt to avoid the broom, but it just slides in front to block my path again. I need to find Chevalier and Anise. Move before I freeze you to the ground. Oh, it was sad. The broom, thankfully, begins to back away into the reception area. I decide to follow it. Perhaps someone's inside. The broom has just made it to the door when it suddenly bumps into a bucket and topples. The reception door opens and Anise steps through. Oh, princess! She looks at me, surprised, before she sees Mr. Broom and understanding lights her features. Oh, Mr. Broom! She moves to help the broom up off the floor. So that's what that sound was. Chevalier stands in the doorway, watching everything with amusement. The moment Anise helps Mr. Broom up, it hops away again. I think Mr. Broom is sulking. I've charmed the broom to sweep on its own, and yet it still harasses me every time I come here. I think it's drawn to your charisma, princess. No, I think Mr. Broom just wants to make my life a living hell. The broom was harmless when Parfait enchanted it, but then Delora had to go and give it its infuriating personality. But it's so dedicated to you, and that's a hard thing to find in a broom. I'm sure if you asked, it would follow you to the palace, too. I kind of want a dedicated enchanted broom. It's like, blah, 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 like, I, I want a broom to be dedicated to me. Like, okay, you could go sweep in the kitchen, have fun. You want a sweet more? Good broom! Pats on the head, throws some crumbs on the ground. Go get it! Well, I'm just saying, I don't want to sweep or do that shit, so an enchanted broom would be nice. That's the last thing I want. Anise beams at me. I'm going to assume you weren't here to sweep. But then, why are you here, princess? I came to speak with Delora and Cinna. Oh, okay. Here we go, talking to everybody. Walking at night, little boy. We're supposed to address Chevalier. Chevalier? I set a hand on his shoulder, but much to my surprise, he recoils. The motion is sluggish, as if he doesn't realize he's doing it. The boy looks between the two of us nervously. I turn to him and offer the best consolatory smile I can muster. And don't worry, the doctor is just acting. Acting? Yes, he likes to pause dramatically when he's about to say something profound. I turn to Chevalier, hoping he'll play along. Right, Chev? Much to my relief, the usual mischievous grin returns to Chevalier's face. Ah, the princess knows me so well. Truth be told, I was simply at a loss for words, because I was overwhelmed imagining Princess Spacey as my wife. To be your husband would be the greatest honor. And then you're like, but you, you were like, don't touch me. It's like, oh. So you do plan on marrying her. And then you'll become king, won't you? Chevalier is king. That's fucking awkward, but... He's like, oh, wait. Just imagine him with a little king and a little crown. Ow. The boy doesn't seem to notice the tension in the air. All right. Did we actually object? For some okay. You're quite welcome, Spacey. You don't need to thank me, though. Of course I do. If you're going to spoil me and go to such lengths to have other people spoil me as well, then the least I can do is thank you. I sigh as I take a bite out of the cookie. As strange as the situation is, I'm still grateful. Your smile is more than enough gratitude for me, princess. You always say that. 
Because it's true. I popped the rest of the biscuit into my mouth before reaching for another and holding it out to Chevalier. I hope you don't plan on making me eat all, these, all of these by myself. Of course not. He takes the biscuit with a bright smile. Okay. Do, 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 do. Argue with him! I fail to see how it's not. The longer this conversation carries on, the harder it is to remain calm. The festering negativity of the Tenebrarum hardly makes it easier. With all due respect, Princess Spacey, if you had any respect, you'd stop talking and start listening. Both Cinna and Chevalier stopped to stare at me. What? Oh, what? I'm sure Chevalier was thinking the same thing. You adults are all the same. You refuse to consider new perspectives. I'm trying to understand you, Cinnamon. That's Cinna. Well, let's try addressing this from a different angle, shall we? Cinna turns away with a scowl. I force myself to take a deep breath. The last thing I want is to make Chevalier worry when he already had other, has other problems to deal with. Boop, okay. We're gonna buy him a scarf. Making him one was so much nicer. He's clearly interested in a few of the scarves we saw in the town square. I'm no professional seamstress. It's definitely better to just buy him a scarf. With that thought, I head to the town square. I'm surprised to see a familiar face when I arrive at the stall. Hmm. Emmeline's eyebrows are scrunched together. Two guards stand nearby, watching the area. They relax as I approach. Emmeline? Emmeline startles so badly she nearly drops the scarf in her hands. Oh, it's just you, Spacey. It's nice to see you, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply I wasn't happy to see you. Actually, I'm quite relieved. Maybe you can help me pick out a scarf. She must read the question from my expression, because the smile on her face turns sheepish. I'm looking for a scarf for Rod. For Rod? It's a peace offering. Did something happen between the two of you? Oh, it's just the letters. Rod found out today that I was sending them to Prince Lance. He was offended I was keeping it a secret, but... Have you seen Rod's face when I talk about Lance? He gets angry enough to boil water. That is what Rod always looks like. Speezy, if Rod knew you'd said that, he would be angry enough to boil water? Emmeline laughs. He's only like that because he's protective, I know, but I really hate it when he's angry with me. I'm s oh, so I'm going to buy him an apology scarf. Will you help me pick one out? Of course, but first, I mean to buy one for Chevalier. Emmeline smiles brightly. We can help each other. I heard about those biscuits at the cafe the other day. Is this to thank him for that? No, I'm just doing this because I want to do something nice for him. Oh, then how about I help you choose something for Chev, and you help me select something for Rod? The two of us begin sifting through the scarves. Eventually, we narrow our selection down to three scarves. I contemplate for a long time before finally picking a scarf I think feels right for Chevalier. I could have sworn I saw him eyeing this one before. It is simple, but still lightly patterned, and I know Chev likes patterns. Oh, I'm sure he'd love that one, Spacey. It seems his style. Good, then I'll buy it. After purchasing the scarf, I assist Emmeline with her own purchase. Before long, we find a scarf that seems like it would suit Rod. After Emmeline purchases and packages it, she turns toward me with a bright smile. I'm sure Chevalier will love this scarf, Spacey. And I'm sure Rod will accept your peace offering. Emmeline sighs. I hope so. Good luck. To you as well. We part ways after that. I leave Emmeline to her errands and return to the palace on my own. I place the package in the dresser by my bed as soon as I return. The last thing I want is for Chev to see it before I find the right time to give it to him. I've only just put the scarf away when a knock sounds on the door. Come in! I'm sitting on the bed when Chevalier strolls inside. Well, well. And here I thought you'd be running yourself dry. It's good to see you relaxing. Do you mind if I join you? No, of course not. I slide over to make room for Chevalier. Boop, okay. 
I really do wish you would talk to me. What are we, what are we, where are we? Uh, we press him for an answer. Okay. Chev, how can I help you if you don't tell me the truth? Spacey. He sighs. Most of them were friendly. And the ones who weren't? Princess, you have a scary look on your face. Say the word and I'll hunt them down. In the very least, they should know that disrespecting Chevalier is tantamount to disrespecting me. Princess, you really don't need to worry so much. And these battles are mine to fight. Except you don't fight at all, Chev. You just smile and nod. I prefer pacifism. In the end, this conversation has gotten us nowhere. Trying on his glasses, now doing things. I collapse onto my bed with an undignified groan. Another long day. Since Chef was not out of work yet, I decided to drop by my room after the meeting to see if I could get some rest. My mind wanders in the silence, my thoughts turning toward Chevalier. Though a week has passed since he started seeing his patients, I can tell he's stressed. One night, when he fell asleep on my desk, I heard him mumbling in his sleep. I could tell he was having an old nightmare, one in which he kills a witch with a serpent's smile and loses one of his dearest friends. I know it's the same dream because he always whispers the same words. I'm sorry I couldn't save you, Lady Parfait. Oh, is this Fritz? You're right, that's when Fritz comes in. Princess Spacey? Fritz, what's up? And even if he's a little irritated, I did give him a peace offering the other day. And that should help tide him over. Considering the effort we went through to get him that scarf, I would hope so. Okay. I know how difficult it is to incorporate yourself into a social sphere you weren't born into. Is there anything I can do for help? Uh, do to help, sorry. We ask for advice. He is, as always, insistent that things are going well, but... But his patients are being condescending. How did you know? Because he seems a person's... Because it seems a person's worth is often determined by their ancestry in this world. It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't, does it? Once, I too shunned Ophelia and her children for not being of royal blood. The realization makes my stomach knot. Ophelia, I'm sorry about before. I... You don't need to apologize, Spacey. I came into your life after a great loss. It's only natural you were so wary of me. No, I mean, yes, but also I was just a raging bitch. So, like, <laughs> like well, uh, two sides of the coin here. And besides, that's all in the past. What matters now is Chevalier, right? He always lets people walk over him, and he doesn't let me stand up for him. Because you can't fight his battles for him. If you did, the nobility would never accept him. They think he was using you as a shield. Then what must I do? Support him, and let him find his own way. Sometimes, and the best way to guide someone is to listen to them. Chevalier says the same thing, that listening is key. Chevalier knew what he was getting himself into when he moved here. Okay, we can skip that now, so we're like... Back here, gonna do the magic show, we're gonna use ice. Aw. Ice is one of my strongest elements, and I might have a way to improve on Sinna's spell. I step forward and concentrate on the falling petals. The petals shine in midair, reforming into bright, crystalline snowflakes. There are gasps and sounds of glee from the audience. And then everyone's clapping and cheering. A spectacular performance from the most talented and beautiful witch in Angeal. Chevalier winks. Do you want to build a snowman, Spacey? <laughs> You can't put that in games anymore. Because you can't. You can't be like, do you want to... Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Just can't. God damn it, Disney. They've ruined everything. <laughs> the amount of times that you start singing that song is just fucking astounding anyway. Great, thanks. Now it's in my head. There's definitely not enough snow here to do that. Cinna looks, upset, looks up at us, eyebrows furrowed. I can't tell if he's annoyed or unimpressed. Claude holds on a hand. Snowflakes settle on his palm. Okay, I'm going to push Cinna out of the way so I can be in the middle of this man sandwich. Ah, huh. I would know this magic anywhere. How fitting for a certain lovely ice princess. 
His eyes fall on me, but I'm too shocked by his sudden appearance to respond. I thought the festival was still a week off. Have I missed some of the pre-celebrations? Another man steps out from behind Claude. Okay, okay. I was like, wait, we've already... I'm like, his intro was different, but I'm like, but Lance's is the same, so... Lenison's and flirting! <laughs> we should have taken lessons from flirting from Claude, okay? You tried to teach me how to flirt because you were convinced it would help me be good. Chevalier looks horrified. Princess, I just lost my memory. What kind of excuse is that? As if anyone would need lessons in that. No, some of us do because we suck at it, okay? We're like, is this flirting? Are we flirting? What's happening here? I don't know what's going on. I need light. Emmeline leans toward me. Were they at least helpful lessons? M. No. Princess! Father chuckles. <laughs> I forgot our dad was here. <laughs> See, okay, but it's still like, bring up his lessons in anatomy. Remember when you tried to teach me about the human body? Wig, wig, and her father <coughs> choking at the other end of the table. Like, we totally phrased it appropriately, but it was still funny because you're like, <laughs> anatomy and flirting. You can't put, like, <laughs> he tried to teach me how to flirt. Her father's like, awkward. <laughs> I can't speak for his other la- Okay, never mind. We already read that. <laughs> can't do the father words now. So I bought one for you. Oh, this one's got a different pattern. That's actually cute. I was like wondering if it was going to look different. Smeezy, you went back to the stall for me. It's the least I could do. Least? And this is the most incredible gift I could ever receive, Spacey. Oh, Chevalier in this timeline doesn't know about Chevalier in the last time, the other timeline, getting a handmade scarf, and that's actually the most incredible gift. But whatever. He shakes his head, okay. But I like the fact that it actually is a different scarf now on a sprite. That's actually really cool. Details. I like little details like this. Voice's point of view. Oh, I hate doing this to him, but I clear my throat. A permission to speak, Your Majesty. Permission granted. I share what I know must be on Chevalier's mind. If we invest more gold in things like medicines, we'd have to decrease their prices on the market for them to be accessible to those who need them. Oh, and this is sad because we're not like... We're saying it so it looks like we came up with it, but it's him and it's like, oh. Oh. I feel like we step on it. Like, we're trying to do the right thing, but we're just being so cold. We've been so bad. What you doing, you, you fruity pops? You're so cute. I love you, little birdie. Anyway, sorry. I just... I get distracted sometimes by the bird being cute. An other bird actually being cute, even though he's an asshole. <laughs> we don't talk to him much. I try to talk to him, and he just wants to attack me. So it's like, you know, I just leave him to his own devices. He's happy if I leave him the fuck alone. Like, if I try to talk to him, he ignores me too anyway, so... Ugh. Our citizens would benefit from additional supplies and services, of course... But how are they to afford them if the amenities are more expensive and they're paying more from their own pockets? That seems to silence the counselor. I glance at Chevalier, who looks at me approvingly. He looks uh, less anxious, though it's still strange to see him being so quiet. All right. Jurian and Garland going out here. Fighting with Cinna. Training with Sina, not really fighting, but I'm going to answer his question. This is a difficult subject for Chevalier. He was even closer to Parfait than I was. I'll not force him to relieve the, uh, relive the painful memories if I can help it. Wow. There was a cruel witch who wanted to use me to bring my mother back. He used the royal family as hostages. When we tried to save them, he retaliated and attacked me. Parfait threw herself in front of his blade. She saved me. We killed the witch, but... It didn't matter. I couldn't save Lady Parfait. I wrap an arm around Chevalier. He deflates beneath my touch. It wasn't your fault, Chev. I look at Cinna. Parfait was one of Chevalier's patients. He did everything he could to save her, but the wound was fatal. She told us not to fuss, and that she was proud of me for not being like my mother. She died with a smile on her face. How very like fate. Cinna runs a hand runs a hand through his hair. He 
His sigh is soft, fragile. Uh, for so many years, I thought she was weak. But I mean, that wasn't the case at all, was it? All right. Enough sadness. Oh, look, we're at the magic show. We're going to look for Chevalier. I look up and try to find Chevalier, and I'm startled to see he's disappeared. Well, where has he gone? I attempt to go looking for him, but it's unexpectedly difficult. The crowd is dense, and all of the movement makes it difficult to spot him. I become lost in the crowd and am tossed from one person to the next until finally... Oh, now there's a voice. Spacey. A voice reaches out to me from the depths of my mind. Soft and gentle. This must be our end chapter, so we're probably in that now. Mother? Okay, I didn't know who was her. Hello, my dearest heart. Have you given thought to what I said? My brain is fuzzy. Whatever memory my mother is referring to, I can't remember. Have you forgotten already? Mother crosses her arms with a scowl. I told you that love serves us no power, but I see you've not changed. You still put your trust in everyone, even when it's a weakness. I told you once that promises were lies crafted by people who would use you. And yet, you decided to put your trust in a fairy? In a human? I'm sorry, Mother. Words are meaningless, my heart. Perhaps, but... Anissa's advice from years ago comes to mind. I haven't forgotten it. Not once. Sometimes apologizing is all we can do when we can't change something that's already happened. I shake my head. You misunderstand me, Mother. I'm not sorry about the choices I've made. I'm only sorry you could never understand them. I'll not be ashamed of thinking for myself. Not anymore. Parfait trusted me to make things better. She believed in me. And I believe in me, too. My mother's icy expression slips, revealing a softness that makes my heart sink. For a few moments, she appears almost apologetic. Mother... I'm assuming... I would say this would probably either be a guard, or it's like a guard or a maid, or... If we're sleeping, it's probably... I would think it could be a maid waking us up, but it's probably Chevalier, so... Princess! Oh no, it's Cinna. Wow. I didn't think we fell asleep in the tavern. So shocking. Princess! I wake abruptly to see Cinna standing before me, arms crossed. You were mumbling in your sleep. What? I remember that I'm in the Marchen. It's the day after the festival, and I've been sitting here waiting for Chevalier to return with Anissa's supplies. I fell asleep? I do my best to appear collected as I smooth down my hair and dress. Cinna smirks. I'd fall asleep too if I had to spend my days with that boring old man. I do have that calming effect on people, I suppose. I glance up to see Chevalier walking downstairs, a niece in tow. Cinna scowls. Making people fall asleep isn't a talent. I wonder what would happen. If you did, like, all of the options, like, say you did all of the good ending option, the best ending options, but you bought him a scarf. In the best ending, would he be wearing this scarf? Did they make two versions of his sprite in each ending? Or, like, so that, like, depending on which choice you made there, that's when this sprite, if... Option one, then show this sprite. If option two, show this sprite. So whatever ending... Because, like, we did the best ending. We made him a scarf. But say we did everything wrong. We just got all the good ending options. But we made him a scarf. This His sprite here would be different. Right? I mean, that's the way it should work. It's kind of interesting. You're like, oh, that's fun! That's the part of coding that's fun to me. It's like, oh, look at all the different... Like I do this, but it's like this, but then in the same thing, and it's like, and it's different. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It just sparked a little bit of joy in me. I was like, ooh, I like that. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to be like, oh, we bought him a scarf in this ending, but you're like, but if we, again, bought him a scarf and got the good end, the best ending, it, he would still be wearing this because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense. And that's like, I don't know. Anyway, it's just, just something that dawned in my mind and I just it just made me slightly happy. I don't know why, but. Making people fall asleep isn't a talent. 
Yes, it is. If you need to sleep, then that is a fucking talent that people want. You're much too cynical for your age, tiny lord. You can make anything a talent with the right attitude. Your optimism is insufferable. It, I feel like it would get overwhelming at times, but I need someone that's that optimistic. Just fucking help me be a little optimistic. Just telling you. like, I need a Chevalier in my life. I'm not kidding. Chevalier waves as, as Cinna walks off with a grumble. And your pessimism is endearing. And he smiles. And did we interrupt something? No, not at all. Did you collect everything you came here for, Chev? Indeed. As always, Lady Anise has exactly what I need. I glance at Anise. I hear from Chev that you started working from the pharmacy. How are things? I hope you've at least been taking gold from them. Unlike someone else I know. Princess, you know I've gotten better. Anise laughs when I eye him skeptically. Even if he wanted to, I don't think Chevalier could ever refuse gold from his majesty. She smiles. And things are going well at the pharmacy, and I do take the coin. I wouldn't be able to afford making my remedies and solves without it. It's good to see someone with some business sense. Princess, is it your mission to break my heart so completely it will never heal? I have faith in your talent to mend it. And throwing my own words back at me, I see. You make it too easy. I rise from my chair with a sigh. My body's sore after the festivities, but it's a gratifying pain. Heading out so soon? Unfortunately, we have an important meeting with the Brigantian nobility today. Oh, what about? A prince exchange program. Anise looks confused. Prince exchange? Anise is like, can I get a prince? Like, what do we have to exchange for this? Is it like I exchange money and I get a prince? Because that sounds like I'm buying him, but it's like I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> Anise! Claude has invited Rod to learn dance in Brigantia, but he also wants to foist his brother on us in exchange. Works out for Emmeline. Works out for Claude. Just saying. Oh, Emmeline would love that. I'm sure she would, wouldn't she? Anise smiles sheepishly and twiddles her thumbs. Do you and Emmeline talk about Lance frequently? Oh, do tell Anise. Um, sometimes? And me and Emmeline talk about a lot of people. Anise trails off, looking so flustered I almost feel guilty for bringing it up. Like, but no. It's fine, Anise. I appreciate that Emmeline can talk to you about these things. Oh, no, I only meant to say that it's helpful to swap advice, because I... And he smiles only, almost shyly. Oh my god, are you in love with Rod? Oh. Oh. Oh no. no. Oh. Anise has got a little boy on the side. <gasps> oh. This is not the broom, is it? Because that's just weird, Anise. I have this customer who visits the pharmacy very often. He's very kind and, um... Anise! Y yes and there's a man you fancy and you haven't told me. <laughs> Chevalier's acting like her dad. <gasps> You're taking my daughter. I was waiting for the right time. And we've only spoken a few times. It's okay, Anise. I wouldn't tell Chevalier anything either. Chevalier slumps against the wall. We're so mean to him right now. Spacey. His flirting advice leaves much to be desired. That seems to make Anise less nervous. She laughs. I could never keep secrets from you two. Emily just wanted someone to talk to, and we were in similar situations, so... Ah, yes, the yearning. I stomp down close to Chevalier's foot, and he yelps and slides away. Aw, oh, leave the poor man alone. Um, yes, and do tell me all about it when you're ready, Anise. But for now, the princess and I really ought to be going. He holds up the bag of supplies. And thank you for the supplies. Of course. I'm about to follow Chevalier out the door when Anise calls my name softly. Princess, I know I'm not eh, the best at this sort of thing, but if you ever want to talk about Chevalier or the future, any of that, you know I'm always willing to listen. Likewise, Anise, I'll always lend an ear. 
I wave to Anise as I exit. Outside, the town feels sleepier than it has in days. Everyone's in the process of taking down streamers and equipment. Not too far away, I find a flower seller taking down wreaths. Unsurprisingly, Chevalier is stopped to his sister. The stall owner thanks him with, of all things, a flower crown. Oh my god. Oh, thank god. I was like, and when I saw when he tries to set, I'm like, please put it on him. I hadn't read the full sentence, but I... Okay, okay. When Chevalier tries to set it on my head, I stand on the tips of my toes and set it on his head instead. Please tell me that's the fucking CG. It suits you. He winks at me. It better be a CG because we don't get the crown on the sprite, so I need that in a CG. Do I look like a prince then? All unfit to escort you down a serene forest path. Forest path? I was just thinking we ought to take a detour. It's been a while since we've had some peace and quiet. You're not going to get us lost, are you? Never! I have an impeccable sense of direction. Chevalier takes my hand and, humming to himself, leads me through the plaza into the forest. The minute we step into the cops, the hustle and bustle of the town falls away, replaced with the gentle chattering of insects. For the first time in a long while, I let down my guard and lean against Chevalier. He mindlessly wraps an arm around my shoulders. You looked so sleepy earlier, princess. I couldn't help but think you needed some time to decompress. You haven't had a moment to breathe since the festival started, have you? And here you and Ophelia were convinced it would help me relax. Chevalier smiles sheepishly. Ah, uh, it wasn't meant to help you relax so much as enthuse you, I suppose. Well, it worked, but now I'd like nothing more than to sleep for days. How convenient that Cinna said I had the uncanny ability to make others fall asleep. I laugh as we duck under a tree branch. It's a shame you're not supposed to be in my bedroom at night. At Chevalier's guilty expression, I clasp his, ha his hand and smile. And though I think if Father wanted to find out, he would. Surely you must see that he enjoys you being at the palace. Chevalier chuckles. It's a soft, almost nervous sound. Do you truly think so? He let you sit on a council meeting, and I've gotten word he's invited you to attend more in the future. Father would only give that privilege to someone he trusts, that he wants on his council. I confess I feel unworthy sometimes. A poor doctor like me is sitting with all those sophisticated nobles. I stop so abruptly, Chevalier nearly trips over his feet. When he pauses to glance back at me, I set a hand on his cheek and guide his face to mine. Chevalier, do you trust me? I remember us walking this path years ago on a similar detour. I remember Chevalier putting a hand to my cheek and saying, You can trust me. His eyes are the same as they were then. Beautiful and violet, and so sincere it makes my heart full. Forever and always, princess. Good. Then trust me when I say I have no reason to ever lie to you. I know my family enjoys your company. I know you're capable of anything if you put your mind to it. Anything you put your... Uh, you're capable of anything you put your mind to. That's how it was worded. I read it weird. Whether it's participating in court or taking care of your patients, you'll always be more than capable. Chevalier looks at me in wonder. And then he reaches out and laces his fingers through mine, gently pulling my hand away from his face. Speezy, and there's something I want you to see. He pulls me behind him, continuing until we reach two trees with intertwining branches. It's through here. Chevalier helps me pass the branches and walks into a clearing. What I see takes my breath away. It's a part of the forest I've never been to, filled with a myriad of bright flowers. Some grow between tree branches and others sway beneath our feet. It's a plethora of color, a hidden and serene sanctuary. Chevalier, how... But before I can say anything, Chevalier abruptly shifts his weight. I fall into him and the two of us go tumbling down into the flowers. Oh, hi. The motion loosens Chevalier's glasses, so he simply slides them into a pocket before turning to face me. And he is wearing the flower crown! I love it! <laughs> ah, thank you! I needed it. What is all this? I went exploring the other day and found this lovely little haven. I've dubbed it the princess's private court. Oh, 
And who are to be my subjects? Chevalier kisses my knuckles and winks at me. Oh, I me, of course. Does that dissatisfy you? Shall I find some cute animals to join your court? I can't help my laughter. You make it you make me sound like a fairy tale princess. Who's to say our life isn't a fairy tale? Anything's possible with the power of optimism. Truly our life is far from a fairy tale. We must deal with prejudices and injustice, and our problems aren't easily solved with magic. But that makes a happy ending all the more worth fighting for. And that's why I won't give up. For you, I'll do anything, my sweet queen. One step at a time, right? One day at a time, we will get closer to a future where I can sit on a throne with Chevalier by my side. Father and Ophelia did it. So can we. I lean forward to kiss Chevalier on the lips. Once, gently, a soft kiss. Spacey? Yes, Chef? I love you. More than anything in this world. I love you, too. We share another kiss beneath the shadows of the trees. In this place, there's no one else. There's just us and our dreams for the future. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> we didn't get engaged. I'm just kidding. Sweet surprise. No, but that fucking CG is, like, amazing. All right, so. Do, 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 do. Look, all oh, the different versions. Okay, anyway, we're keeping it on this one. So, that was his good ending, which was good. I liked it. Um, so, what we should be doing later today is starting Waltz's route. But like I said in the last part, just in case there's a gap, if it, there's nothing else this af late this afternoon, it's because I got behind and I pushed it off a little. So just bear with me if that happens. Um, I'm going to try not to let that happen, but life and the and lazy and just whatever. So anyway, um, we will obviously continue. I'm not going to like not do this. But at the same time, I'm also going to see and decide what I'm going to do because I know I said when we first started this game that Taisho Alice part three was coming out. And then I was like, maybe we'll either have, like finish this or were we going to do one part of this, one part of that? I don't know. I haven't decided. So you'll obviously see if we just do waltzes, you know, I just, I don't know what's going to happen right now. I haven't started playing that because I still have three other games that I'm still trying to record and that's a lot. <laughs> I was like ahead and I was like, maybe we can fit this in and now I'm like, and now I'm going to get behind and like, uh, but, um, so I'll see. I don't think I can manage four games. Um, you know, and since we only have two routes of this left, you know, it doesn't, like, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see how fast I finish other games to where I could pick that up. Do I put that in after what's going on? Like, I don't know. So we will have that eventually, but we, I'm, we, we, we are going to finish this. Like just in case Waltz's route, it doesn't start later today. Maybe it'll just start next week. Maybe there would just be like, you know what I mean? Not today, but my goal is that that doesn't happen and everything goes on like normal and you don't see any kind of interruption at all. But if I don't say anything, then there will be an interruption of people like, what happened? Where'd it go? And it's like, then I got to do an update video. So I'm just telling you now, just in case probably won't happen, but just in case it does, you know? So anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this part up here and we'll start Waltz's route next, whenever next happens to be. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.